All right, people, I believe everybody is doing great, nice and absolutely fine. So in the next 20 minutes, we'll be completing the entire modern physics, okay? This is for your NEET 2025. And my dear friends, when it comes to the modern physics, we'll be completing the three chapters, okay? Dual nature, atoms and nuclei. And, and we say 9 to 12 questions are expected from this particular portion. That means 48 marks. Extremely important session. Make sure everybody of you smash the like button and, and you share it with your friends also. Now, guys, let's move on to this one. First and the foremost thing that we study over here, that is dual nature of matter and radiation. Here we say energy of a photon. We say energy of a photon is H into F, where H is Planck's constant, F is frequency. Even we can say F is equal to C by lambda also. This is also the energy of photon, that is HC divided by lambda. Lambda is the de Broglie's wavelength. Energy of photon, you can write it something like this also. If you put a Planck's constant, if you put speed of light, you'll get... 2 into 10 raised for minus 25 divided by lambda and this is the energy of a photon in joules. If you want to calculate the energy of a photon in electron volts, it would be 1240 electron volt lambda is in nanometer. This is the energy of a photon in electron volts but when lambda is in angstrom. Keep that thing in your mind. Then my dear friends, if we talk about energy of light, energy of light simply means NHC divided by lambda, okay, N is the number of photons, H is Planck's constant, C is speed of light, lambda is de Broglie's wavelength. When it comes to the power of light, we say power of light is nothing but energy per second, total energy per second, energy upon time, energy will be NHC divided by lambda and this is time is T. And if we talk about the intensity, intensity means energy upon time into area. That means power divided by area also. And that is NHC divided by lambda. This is energy. Okay. And this is time and this is area. I hope intensity is also crystalline clear. Then my dear friends, we say photoelectric effect. What does photoelectric effect mean? If we have a metal surface over here, okay. On this metal surface, these photons are falling. We say due to the falling of photons, electrons are ejected from the metal surface. This phenomena is called photoelectric effect. When metals, when photons fall on the metal surface, electrons are ejected. This is called photoelectric effect. Okay. And then we say work function. It is the minimum amount of energy required to pull out the electrons from the metal surface. That is called the work function. Now, my dear friends, take a look. This is the experimental setup of photoelectric effect. Like you have cathode, you have anode over here. This is the light source. This is the opening. Okay. And, and this is the battery connected. So basically, light falls onto this cathode. Electrons are then ejected. Now, one formula you need to understand. So basically, when light falls, energy photons fall. Okay. Photon have got energy. So that energy of photon is used in work function and kinetic energy. So basically that energy is used by this electron in coming out of the metal surface. Okay. Then, then rest of the energy it is using in, in moving forward. So energy of photon is work function plus kinetic energy maximum. This is called Einstein's photoelectric equation. And if we make the graph between energy and photo, photo current and EMF, so it is coming out to be something like this. This is the stopping potential. Stopping potential is that potential where, where no current flows at that potential at which no current flows. So that's why here current is zero. Okay. And this is the peak current, which is called the saturation current. Okay. Yes. Now, guys, if you take a look over here, this is the graph between photo current versus EMF here, here, here. All these three graphs have got the same photo current, means intensity of the three graphs is same. And stopping potential is different, means frequency is different. Because intensity depends upon photo current and, and frequency depends upon stopping potential. If you take a look at this graph, here intensity is different, but, but, but frequency is same. Why? Because stopping potential is same. Okay. Yes. Then we come on to the matter wave or de Broglie's wave. De Broglie said, Everything in this universe is, is made up of, is, is, is a part, has a particle as well as wave nature, okay? Like this pen also has a wave nature. So there is a wave associated with it. That is what we call the matter wave or de Broglie's wave. And the wavelength of that is H divided by MV or H, H divided by P, P, where P is the momentum. Now, my dear friends, different forms of lambda means different forms of de Broglie's wavelength. De Broglie's wavelength in terms of kinetic energy. This is the de Broglie's wavelength in terms of kinetic energy. H upon under root of 2 mke, okay? Or de Broglie's wavelength for a relativistic particle. That particle which has a huge speed comparable to the speed of light. It is, it is H under root of 1 minus V square by C square M naught into V, okay? Then we say 
for a charged particle accelerated with potential difference delta v so lambda is equal to h upon under root of 2 m q delta v m is the mass q is the charge delta v is the potential difference so de Broglie's wavelength for a charged particle which is at rest lambda is equal to h upon q e t h is Planck's constant q is charge e is electric field t is time Charged particle in a magnetic field, if there is a charged particle which is in the magnetic field, it has the de Broglie's wavelength and lambda is equal to h upon qbr. For a gaseous molecule at temperature t, h upon under root of 3 mkbt. Yes, yes. Okay, for an electron moving in the nth orbit of an atom, nh upon 2m 13.6. Okay. Then we say, my dear friends, let's move on to the next chapter that is atoms. Okay. That is atoms. Next chapter is basically atoms. Now, my dear friends, now, my dear friends, now, my dear friends, when it comes to the Bohr's first postulate, when it comes to the Bohr's first postulate, so basically, an electron is revolving accelerated motion. Bohr's first postulate says that an electron revolves around the nucleus. An electron revolves around the nucleus, okay? So, means it is an accelerated motion, means charge is accelerated. It forms wave. It forms which wave? It forms a stationary wave, okay? Which means it does not radiate energy. So, when an electron moves, moves around the nucleus, it, 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 it forms a wave, but that is a stationary wave, which does not re release the energy or radiate the energy. So, so second postulate of Bohr's model is, so, an electron moves only in those orbits where its angular momentum is nh divided by 2 pi, okay? Third postulate is, if an electron is moving in the lower orbit, if it makes the transition to the higher orbit, we are supposed to supply the energy to it. If an electron moves in the higher orbit, if it makes the transition to the lower orbit, energy is released from it. Energy is released from it, okay? Then, my dear friends, then, my dear friends, we say mathematical analysis of Bohr's theory, theory. Velocity of an electron in the nth orbit. If there is an electron which is moving in the nth orbit, how much is its velocity? It is v is equal to 2.2 into 10 raised power 6, z by n. Or we can say v is equal to v naught z by n. Okay. Then, my dear friends, radius of an electron in the nth orbit. If an electron is revolving in the nth orbit, how much is its radius? R is equal to uh, 0.53 angstrom n square by z, where n is the... Uh, nth orbit and z is the atomic number r not n square by z okay time period how much time it is going to take in completing one cycle 1.51 into 10 raised power minus 16 n cube divided by z square okay then my dear friends then my dear friends this is the magnetic field created by the electron at its center when it is revolving in the nth orbit that is z cube divided by n5 and value of b naught is given over here okay then let's talk about the energies Total energy of an electron in the nth orbit. When it comes to the kinetic energy, that is z e square upon 8 pi epsilon naught r. Potential energy is minus z e square upon 4 pi epsilon naught r. Total energy is minus z e square upon 8 pi epsilon naught r. This and this is negative. Kinetic energy in this case is positive. Okay. Like guys, when we talk about the hydrogen atom, for hydrogen atom z is equal to 1. In the first orbit, this is the energy of an electron in its first orbit, minus 13.6. In the second orbit, in the third orbit, in the fourth orbit, and so on, and so on. Okay, then, if we define the spectrum, it is the collection of radiations of different wavelengths on a photographic plate. Like if you have a white light, if you place the prism over here, okay, when this white light passes through the prism, it is, it is, we say, it is, uh, I would say, divided into seven different colors. All of these will fall on this one. This is what we call the spectrum. Falling on these of these seven different colors on the screen is called the spectrum. Then we say absorption spectrum. My dear friends, when a photon is sent over here, electron makes the transition from lower orbit to the higher orbit. And here on the screen, on the bright screen, we say a, a dark color, a dark line is formed. This is called absorption spectrum. Dark color means energy photon has been eaten up by the electron. That's why... Okay, when an electron makes the transition from higher orbit to the lower orbit, in that case, photon is released, energy is released. So, it makes a bright color, bright line on the dark background. This is called emission spectrum. Okay, then we say Lyman series. Guys, in case of Lyman series, if an electron makes the transition from higher orbits to the first orbit, we show it in the Lyman series. Okay, this is the first line, this is the second line, third line. Okay, so here, here, final orbit is one initial orbit can be 2, 3, 4, up to infinity, okay? And then, when it comes to the Balmer series, in case of Balmer series, if an electron makes the transition from higher orbit to the second orbit, so we show that in the Balmer series, okay? Similarly, we have Parshan series over here. 
Yes. Now, guys, when an electron makes the transition from higher orbit to the lower orbit, a photon is released. If you are supposed to find the wavelength of that photon, you can use this particular formula. Or wavelength of the lines in the Balmer series, Passion series, Lyman series, you can use this. Okay, where R is the Redberg constant, 1 upon n final, final orbit square minus initial orbit square. Okay, yes. Then, my dear friends, if we move on to the nucleus, okay. So, we say... In, inside the nucleus, you have got protons and neutrons. These particles which are inside the nucleus are called hydrons, baryons or nucleons. Okay. Okay. And, and if you have to write the nucleus, let's suppose we have any nucleus named X. Okay. At the top of it, we have its A. A is the mass number and Z is the atomic number. Okay. And what about the... So basically A means A means mass number that is number of protons plus number of neutrons. Z is atomic number that is number of protons only. So my dear friends when it comes to the number of neutrons that will be A minus Z. Okay number of neutrons will be A minus Z. Now guys when it comes to the nuclear size. Okay, nuclear size means size of nucleus. So we say it has been experimentally verified. Volume of nucleus is directly proportional to the mass number. So, so we say radius of nucleus will be R naught A raised power 1 by 3. Okay, this is how it, it is proportional. And when it comes to the density of nucleus, density of nucleus is constant. That is 10 raised power 17 kg per meter cube. And it is constant for all the nuclei. Then when it comes to the binding energy, let's suppose you have a nucleus over here and you are breaking this nucleus you are using energy okay then my dear friends you are taking these nucleons out okay guys c c c a is the mass number z is the atomic number if i say z protons you are taking out so z protons have got mass z mp plus how many neutrons a minus z those have got mass mn and it is greater than this mass collective mass which was before okay then my dear friends we say the energy which is used in breaking the nucleus is stored in the form of mass that's why mass later on came out to be greater than the collective mass before okay and this energy is what we call the binding energy due to which we broke this nucleus and due this energy only is stored in the form of mass that's why mass defect came over here and if you have to find the mass defect that will be final mass minus initial mass and if you have to find how much energy is stored in this one, you can say binding energy is delta m into c square. How much is the mass defect multiplied by c square? Okay, this is the mass defect multiplied by c square. Okay, then my dear friends, we say graph between binding energy per nucleon or stability. Either you say binding energy per nucleon or stability versus mass number. It is something like this, something like this. Okay, guys, 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 we say from mass number A is equal to 30 to 170, all of these nuclei are stable, highly stable. Okay, if this there is a nucleus which has got, got mass number less than 30, it is less stable. If there is a nucleus which has got mass number greater than 170, it is also unstable. So basically, two nuclei combine together, fuse together to form a bigger nuclei. This process is called fusion. And here, here we say this fusion is done so that the nucleus becomes stable. And energy is released in this process. Why? Because, because something attains stability. And if there is a bigger nucleus, it breaks into two small nuclei. It breaks into two small nuclei. So if there is a bigger nucleus, it breaks into two small nuclei. This one and this one. And, and this process is called fusion. So here also, this nucleus attains stability. Okay. Then we say Q value of the reaction. Guys, we say this is how much energy is absorbed or released. Like you have got the two nuclei, A plus B. If these two nuclei are converted to C plus D, and we say in this Q, Q value of the reaction, we say, we say some energy is either absorbed in this nuclear reaction or some energy is released, okay? So that is Q value of the reaction. How do we find the Q value of the reaction? We say mass of reactants minus mass of products into C square. Okay, like you say mass of A plus mass of B minus mass of A, mass of C plus mass of D. Okay, now my dear friends, if mass of reactants is greater than mass of products, Q will come out to be positive. Means energy is released, means it's an exothermic process. And when it comes to the, if I say mass of reactants is less than mass of products, in that case Q is negative. We say energy is absorbed, it's an endothermic process, okay? So my dear friends, I have covered all the topics when it comes to the complete modern physics. Make sure you'll revise from this particular, uh, uh, we say, session. Thank you so much. See you guys very soon.